I do want to ask you, you brought up Band of Brothers and you 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 played Buck. What did you I I at least I understand that you met Lynn Compton. What what was that in terms of not just the part, but shaping you as an individual and his story and shaping um, me as an individual? Boy, I, I can't even well, I'll get to one of this. You're gonna like the, the, the punchline in this one. Uh so he became like another dad to me. And when we were doing Band of Brothers, I would call him in the middle of the night all the time. Where did you sleep with you, Thompson? Did you keep it on your right side? How did you keep it on the left side? Would you roll over? It's like, my gosh. And he would answer every question. And we became so close. Uh, and what he did as an American to do what he did in World War II, then to become a police officer, and then to put himself through law school, and then become the chief prosecuting attorney against Sirhan Sirhan and Manson, and then to start his own conservative talk radio show in Washington, Washington State. He's he was just an incredible guy to have in my life and, and a guiding factor also. And in fact, he would always tell me, Neil, come on, you got to come out of the political closet and tell everyone you're Republican. I'm like, I can't, Buck, I, I, can't, I can't do that. That, that. That'd be hard in Hollywood. Uh, and finally, at his funeral, in front of thousands of people, I got up there and I said, OK, this is for Buck and Buck is laying right in front of me. I said, it's going to sound like an AA meeting, but here it goes. Hi, I'm Neil McDonough and I'm a Republican. And the place just lost their mind. I could feel Buck shaking in his casket uh, with with pride that I finally let it out of my system. And uh, <laughs> you know, everyone knows how I feel about all kind, you know, life and 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 God, and, and how I'm kind of conservative on certain things and not so conservative on on other things. But uh, Buck, between my father coming over from Ireland and, and becoming an American citizen by going into the army, uh, and with Buck Compton, those are two guys that really pressed. And look, you can say Republican, Democrat, whatever you, whatever you are. I, I'm just uh, so proud to be an American and to have this great relationship with God in this family environment that 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 I fortunately have in my life. My family that I was born with, they've always supported me, and my wife and my kids here support me. And uh, I'm not sure what you call it, but I'm just really blessed to be where I am. This this new movie, The Shift. This is not my world. <gasps> I've never been to this lake before. Never walked its shores. But I will find my way back. And I will find my way back to my Molly. Five years ago, I was left in this dark place. Taken from my wife. The people here have no hope. There is so much evil and inhumanity in this world, but there is also beauty and hope, and I will find my way back to her. I, let, let me just ask this because I'm, I'm, I'm half want to talk about the movie, but also your role. Like when I was rolling the credits, there you were, executive producer at the top. What what is this your first rodeo as an executive producer? What did that what what did that entail for you versus starring in a movie? No, we we started with Greater uh, several years back, and that, and that was that was such a fantastic film and, and to be part of, and it's done so well as times progress. I mean, like crazy, crazy well. And then I knew, okay, I'm I'm good at pulling in talent. And then a few years back, we did a movie called Redstone. Uh, that I helped executive produce. And then halfway through filming it, I went to the writer, Derek Presley, and I said, let's let's go write part two to this and make it bigger. The first film we shot was for half a million dollars. And then Reve, my wife, went out and raised the 1.5 to do Boone. And then we went off and raised money to do another film, and then another film, and then another film. And now we've got the last rodeo that we're about to start that John Avnet is going to direct. He did Fried Green Tomatoes, amongst other amazing projects. And now we're up to $8 million on, on uh, our budgets. So we, we we keep on building. This is our fifth movie now, and we have a TV series set up at at, at Amblin uh, through Steven Spielberg's company. So people, it's it's funny that how people are finally really listening to what Reve and I have to say, because the films we've made so far have all made money, and they're right. all have great messages, and people really like them. So Unity, this company that came to us, said, "We know what you're doing, and we want to be part of it. We have three hundred million dollars in a film fund. What do you got?" I said, "Well." I'm just finished writing the script. And I'll give it to you next week. And they read it and they said, this is what we're going to start out with. And that's the shift. Is that? No, no, that's, this is um, the last rodeo. Okay. Uh, which we so shot. What, what, what got you, what got you the, the, what, what made you want to do the shift and, and what, what was the message that drew you into that? Well, so then when it came to the shift, 
I, w- I really like being an executive producer on projects because I can bring in better talent or I can help okay. say, hey, come in this thing with me or find a better director or find a, whatever the case is and really kind of start to build a family when we get to set. Like the first day on set, I'm always there saying a, a prayer with, with the whole crew. Or every Monday morning, you know, the first prayer is coming or Friday afternoon, and another prayer is coming. And always just kind of remind us where we are in, in the environment, how fortunate we are to be doing the things that we love to do. And we get to do it to give glory to God at the same time. Man, th- it's awesome. So when the shift came, it was the same kind of thing. I said, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll do this, but I, I want to make sure that I can help with the casting and, and bring in ideas like, you know, like Sean Aston or other people and, um, and really kind of make the best project possible. Because I'm a worker horse, I'm a lunch pail guy. I want to make sure that I'm the first one there and the last one to leave, and it works. And Reve's the same way. So when we had the opportunity to do this and start our relationship with Angel Studios, I didn't realize the blessing that it was going to be. And now we have a oh, first yeah. look deal with Angel uh, Black Spartans, this football film we just did. We're probably going to go uh, run it through Angel. Um, the last rodeo will go through Angel Studios. Uh, Wicked and the Righteous, this this western that we just wrote that. Uh, Jim Caviezel's interested in playing uh, my evil brother. It's Cain and Abel in the West. So we've got all these great things going down the pipeline, and it's all funneling through Unity for financing and uh, Angel Studios for distribution. And I, I could not possibly, if I don't work for anyone else for the rest of my life except for my wife and Angel Studios in Unity, and I get to turn out a movie <laughs> a year, I'm the happiest to get. I'm I'm Mel Paso. I'm Clint Eastwood. I get to do it. Studios guys, uh, I've talked to them a bunch. The Chosen, Sound of Freedom. I mean, listen, oh, I'm with you. If I had to go bet on anybody right now, that's where my money's going. Yeah, they're they're incredible, and they're, they're doing it. You know, they, they 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 do it because they know it's the right thing to do, and not many other people in, in the studio world are doing that for sure. And uh, those guys are Angel Studios is incredible, really incredible. And they give young artists a chance to tell their stories. And it's 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 remarkable. I want to get back to the movie for a second, but you touched on something. These Angel Studio guys, right? The Chosen, Sound of Freedom, your movie now, they touch stuff and it becomes successful. There's great talent. There's great messages. Uh, people get excited about the movie. I watched The Shift and I was like, I, it just, it, it, it came at me from different angles. And we can talk about that in a second. But the bottom line is I feel like there's great content. And and you said something about like now that there's people getting drawn in because they're profitable. Do you think that I, I've always wondered if Hollywood actually responds to that? Because I, I would think you'd see more content like that come out than less. Oh, it's going to now. I mean, Sound you of think? Freedom is kind of, there'll, there'll be a lot more content like Sound of Freedom and The Shift and The Chosen because they're profitable. I know, but I just, I feel like, look at the Marvel movies. They, 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 they had a formula there and they said, hey, let's make them, let's insert things in them to, to ups, upset the apple cart. It, it, it didn't make sense. It, it, and it, yet it, I look at some of these other things and say, that makes sense. It makes profitable. It's profitable. People are going to see it. They're downloading it. They're talking about it. And yet, where's the, where's the, you know, where's the interest from Hollywood? Yeah, it's, it's, look, again, Right now, the studios are going to still keep making the things they've been making for the last few years. The numbers are starting to go down on a lot of them because they know that there is this yearning for better material, material that actually makes you think. Not, you know, I go to the big studio films now, and again, I'm I'm part of it. I'm guilty of being being part of these films, but they they force your thought process. And unlike films like The Shift or The Chosen or other project, you get to form your own thought process instead of being told or shoveled down your throat what they want you to think. Right. And, and there's, there's the big difference. So am I going to never going to do a studio film again? No, that's, 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 that would be silly. You know, if, if it's a great opportunity for a great project, if it's a project that I want to be part of, for sure. Do you feel but like well, people in Hollywood though, that when you talk to other actors, other players in the financing directors, et cetera, are they saying, Hey, Neil, like, can you hook me up? Cause I, I loved what you guys did and I want to be part of that. I have gotten so many calls, emails, texts from exactly that. Buddies of mine are like, wow, you guys are actually doing things I've always wanted to do. How can I be part of it? Well, we'll jump on board, send a script, send an idea, come meet, talk to the guys at Angel. Let's let's see what ideas you have. Because, you know, artists are artists and they like to be artistic and creative. And when you can find a place like Angel that really, look, you have an idea, you put it on the Angel website. And if 50% of the voters like it, then they start the crowdfunding. Right. The angel accelerator comes in with the other half. Look, on the shift, we had six 
6,000 people invest in the film. 6,000. The credits on, on, on the donators alone was far longer than the people who worked on the film. Right. And it's because Angel is having this built-in fan base with the people who vote for it. So now they're in it. And, this, and it has to pass certain guild requirements for it to be a show with Angel, right? Huh. So once it gets that, you already have this massive fan base. And the fan base at Angel started small, and now it's getting, I mean, The Chosen yeah. has a million viewers. I mean, it's, it's crazy when you think about how far it reaches without the big studio advertising money, without all the studio push. This is a small little studio that's trying its hardest to push and stay up against the big players and they are and they're only going to get bigger and better because people want to see it and they'll vote on it and they'll put their own money into it and yeah. it's a different way of making projects and as creative people it's fantastic